Good afternoon, I am Andrew Haney, and today I'm going through my Blu-ray collection, starting with my Criterions. So for this video series, I'm going to go through every film in my Blu-ray collection in alphabetical order, and this will be split into several parts. And the first part that I'm going to be giving you today are my Criterions. I'll give out the name of the film, my brief thoughts on the film, and to my right will be my rating of the film. Now first, Twelve Angry Men. This is the only film in this entire collection that is a DVD, because it's a Criterion DVD, I decided to keep it with my Criterions. But this is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. It is just so good. Henry Fonda, such a great character that he plays. One of my, like, top three best films ever made, in my opinion. 400 Blows. Uh, I cannot pronounce the name of the director, but this is an amazing film. Probably my favorite French New Wave film. It's the only one I own anyway, but uh, this is phenomenal. Absolutely love it. Uh, Do the Right Thing, uh, Spike Lee joint. Definitely a classic. Definitely, in my opinion, Spike Lee's best film. And I love it. The Age of Innocence, Martin Scorsese. This is not one of my favorite Scorsese films, if I'm to be honest, but I quite like it still. A 7 out of 10, I guess. Down by Law by Jim Jarmusch. Jim Jarmusch, something like that. Uh, I've only seen two Jim Jarmusch films, this and Patterson. Patterson is amazing. This is much better than Patterson, even so. Jarmusch has potential to be one of my favorite directors now that I think about it, but this is an amazing film. Eraserhead, David Lynch. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't know how high on the list it would be, but this movie, it did take several viewings for me to get to this rating, a 10 out of 10. It was originally an 8, but then I rewatched it one or two times, and I'm like, yeah, this is a damn 10. Fantastic Mr. Fox, my favorite Wes Anderson film. Probably, maybe. <laughs> There's not much else to say, but this movie's amazing. It's fantastic. Following Christopher Nolan's first film, I actually just got this. Uh, this is not my favorite Nolan film. In fact, if I'm to be honest, it's my least favorite Nolan film. But I still like it. Speaking of favorite directors, The Game by David Fincher, starring Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. Uh, not a favorite Fincher film, but it's still really solid. And I highly recommend it. Grand Budapest Hotel by Wes Anderson. This is a recent film that I would call true cinema because it's so good and it's so well done. Ray Fiennes pulls an amazing performance. I, I just love this movie. Oh boy, now we got to The Hidden Fortress by Akira Kurosawa. Probably my favorite deceased director, unless we're counting Kubrick. Actually, besides Kubrick, this is my favorite director. Definitely not the last Kurosawa film on here, by the way. This is one of my least favorite Kurosawa films. I know it inspired Star Wars. I even made a joke about that in my crummy Star Wars review. It's one of my least favorite, but it's still a phenomenal film. High and Low, starring Toshiro Mifune by Akira Kurosawa. Again, another Kurosawa film. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite Kurosawas. Uh, sometimes I think it deserves a 9, but my rating right now on Letterboxd is a 10. And I'm keeping it at a 10, if I'm to be honest. Inside Lewin Davis, great Coen Brothers film. In fact, I actually think it's in their top five. Oscar Isaac gives a career best performance. I really love the soundtrack. It just, it slaps. <laughs> a little visual joke there. It's not even that funny. The Killing, Stanley Kubrick. Not one of his best films, but I still adore it. Uh, who's in this? Sterling Hayden, Colleen Gray. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's not one of my favorite Kubricks, though. Lady Vanish oh. Lady Vanishes, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, one of his earlier films and one of his better films. Great mystery film, but then again, Hitchcock always makes great mystery films, and this is a great film. I love it. Last Temptation of Christ by Martin Scorsese. Again, not one of his best films. It's like on par with uh, Age of Innocence, but I quite like it. This, this stirred a lot of controversy with Willem Dafoe as Jesus and all that. Well, not that, it's just that he sinned and all that. That did spark a lot of controversy, but I still quite like this movie regardless. Oh boy. Pan's Labyrinth, Guillermo del Toro. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite films of the 21st century. I just absolutely love this film. 
you will learn that life is not like fairy tales. Oh boy. Paths of Glory by Stanley Kubrick. This is a phenomenal film. It might be the best World War I film I've ever seen. Okay, not true. Lawrence of Arabia is better, so scratch that. This is one of Kubrick's better films, not one of his best. It's really depressing. Oh my goodness. The ending just shook me. I'm not going to spoil it, but holy smokes, the ending is just sad. Well, not the very end, but like the climax. It's just really sad. Oh boy, Jackie Chan. These are not very sad movies. Police Story and Police Story 2. Uh, they're not amazing, but I like them quite a lot. They are incredible for stunts and their action, but that's really just icing. I don't love the story of these movies all that much, but Jackie Chan's stunts in the action holds it up for me. Oh boy. Princess Bride. For my mother, father, and brother, this is all one of their favorite movies. It's not one of mine, but it's still amazing. Probably Rob Reiner's best film, I would say. I mean, he directed North, so what the fuck do I know? Uh, I love Princess Bride a lot. I love it. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Yeah, I don't know why this is on Criterion. It's just, I, I wanted it anyway. Punch Your Glove, Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh, Adam Sandler's one of his best performances, either this or Uncut Gems, which I sadly don't own. Uncut Gems is amazing, but I only wanted to watch it once. This is a movie I had to watch at least twice. I'd say it's one of PTA's best films. Not his number one best. I will get to that one later in the collection, but this is an amazing film. Uh, definitely a, one of the best films Adam Sandler's ever been in. Maybe even the best. Rashomon, Akira Kurosawa. This is a classic. Absolute classic. It's not my favorite Kurosawa. I'll get to that one next. Rashomon is just, there's not a Kurosawa film like it. It's four different stories. They're all completely contradictory. And until the end, I won't say what. You don't know which one was really true. And even then, it's a little bit more ambiguous than your average ending. I just adore this movie. Seven Samurai. My favorite film of all time and my favorite Kurosawa film. Uh, I don't use that phrase lightly. This is, I think, top two best films ever made. The best film ever made, in my opinion, is The Godfather. This would be number two, with Twelve Angry Men at number three. This is just, this is everything I want in a movie. It is long, I get that. It's three hours and 27 minutes long. But it's got my, my two of my favorite characters of all time, Kanban Kikuchio, uh, played by Takashi Shimura and Toshiro Mifune, respectively. Two of my favorite characters in performances of all time. The Seventh Seal by Igmar Bergman. I have seen two films from this director. This and Persona. I don't own Persona, sadly. But this, I like them about equally. This is an amazing film. It's not one of my favorites, but I still love it. Very influential. I wish I could quote it right now, but I don't want to mess up the quote. Science of the Lambs. This is a film that keeps getting misquoted with uh, Anthony Hopkins saying, Hello, Clarice. He doesn't say that. Whatever. Regardless, this is one of my favorite movies. Easily one of my favorite horror films of all time. Uh, if it's really a horror film. Hannibal Lecter and Clarence Starling are two of my favorite characters of all time as well. Hannibal Lecter is one of my favorite villains ever. And Clarence Starling is one of my favorite heroes ever, if you want my opinion. I just, I love this film so much. Screenplay, directing, all that stuff. Thorn of Blood, adaptation of Macbeth. Not one of my favorite Kurosawa films, but I still love it. All right. Time Bandits, Terry Gilliam. Uh, this is not even close to one of my favorite Gilliam films. And I wanted to get Brazil before I made this video. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. Uh, Brazil is my favorite Terry Gilliam film. This is like, I don't even think this will make the top five, but very charming. I like the little characters a lot. Uh, the kid's very likable, but it's not a great movie. Now for a double feature of Yojimbo and Sanjiro. Two great Akira Kurosawa films, two of his better films. I think I liked Yojimbo a little bit more, but I gave him the same rating. Yojimbo's been remade twice by uh, Fistful of Dollars, which I really like, and another remake that I haven't seen. But I don't know, it's just, these are amazing movies all around. Ito Mamba Tambien, Alfonso Coron. 
Uh, hopefully that uh, cover doesn't get this video demonetized, but whatever. This movie is amazing. A little sad due to the subject matter, the story it goes over. But I quite enjoy this movie. Very quaint. Very elegant as well. Uh, great direction from Karam. I'm going to go over this row, this second row here. Just talk about all these films and first we've got all the collection of Blu-rays. We've got, I lost the case of this movie, but it's the Alfred Hitchcock Essentials Collection. Having four of the greatest films of all time and also the birds. <laughs> anyway, regardless, these are my ratings for all five films. Rear Window is my favorite Hitchcock film. That's one of the best films of all time. Vertigo is amazing, 10 out of 10. North by Northwest, same 10 out of 10. Psycho, probably the best horror film ever made, 10 out of 10. And The Birds is an 8. Might make the top 10 uh, Hitchcock films, but I don't know that for sure. But it's amazing. I love all five of these movies. But The Birds is not one of my favorites, unlike the other four. Indiana Jones, The Complete Adventures. All three movies on Blu-ray. Okay. Joking aside, yes, there's four movies, and I actually don't think uh, the film Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is that bad, but my rating for the first one is a 9, the second one a 7, the third an 8, and the fourth a generous 5. It is one of the worst Spielberg films, but it's not that bad. Marvel Studios Cinematic Universe Phase 1. Uh, Iron Man... Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America the First Avenger, and the first Avengers movie. Um, I have reviewed all of these already, but I will say, after re-watching several of them, there, my thoughts on some of them have gotten worse. My thoughts on one of them have gotten better, though. I'll say which ones. Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, and Iron Man 2 have all gotten much worse. After re-watching them, my rating for Iron Man is a 6, Incredible Hulk a 3, and Iron Man 2 is a 4. I made it at least closer to a 5 than a 3. Uh, Thor actually got better after rewatching it. My rating like that is probably a 5? It is better than I remember. Uh, Captain America the First Avenger and the Avengers have aged just the same. I give them the same rating that I give back when I reviewed them all the way back when. Uh, the First Avenger is a 6 and the Avengers is a 7. I love the MCU, but none of them are, ma are really masterpieces. Now, Phase 2 is where it starts getting better. We've got Iron Man 3, which is the best Iron Man movie. Y'all just hate fun. Thor The Dark World, the worst MCU movie. My rating is now a 2 instead of a 3. Captain America The Winter Soldier, which is awesome. Same goes for Guardians of the Galaxy. Those two films have aged just as perfectly. So is Age of Ultron, Avengers Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. Uh, they're good movies, except for Ant-Man and Thor The Dark World. But this is where it started to get much better. Now we've got Phase 3 Part 1, which I don't have Part 2 for a number of reasons. One, it's much more expensive than the other three. And two, uh, I already own my three favorite films from Part 2 uh, on Blu-rays, on separate Blu-rays, so I didn't feel the need to get one yet. Anyway, this has Civil War, or Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Thor Ragnarok. All these films I'd give the same rating as I did way back when when I reviewed them. Uh, the Shrek 4 movie collection, my favorite anime. <laughs> Memes aside, I love the first two Shrek movies. They are great. The second one I like a little bit more, but I don't think it's a cinematic masterpiece or anything like that, but neither is the first one really. The third one is terrible, I only have it because it's in the collection, and the fourth one is actually kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. More than a guilty pleasure, I think it's a genuinely good movie. I, I give it like a 7 out of 10, but like it's a good conclusion to, other than the third one, a pretty good series. The first one's great, second one's excellent, third one is terrible, and the fourth one is pretty good. So those are my thoughts on uh, Shrek, and now we get to the big one, the Stanley Kubrick Visionary Filmmaker Collection. Stanley Kubrick is my favorite director, period besides Kurosawa. I have seen almost every Kubrick film, with like one exception maybe. Lolita is great. 2001 is my second favorite film of all time. Clockwork Orange is phenomenal. Barry Lyndon is amazing. The Shining, one of the best horror films ever made. Full Metal Jacket's awesome. After the first 45 minutes though, I don't like it quite as much. Eyes Wide Shut is sadly my least favorite Kubrick film. I just didn't get that much into it. It's more, it's just, 
mostly artsy porn, but it is still artsy and it's still a great movie. This is the discount version of the Masterpiece Collection, which I do not own. Stanley Kubrick is such a phenomenal director. Steven Spielberg, The Director's Collection. Again, no case for some reason. Got Duel, which is great. Sugarland Express, which is pretty good. Jaws, phenomenal film. 1941, easily uh, his worst film, 4 out of 10. E.T. The Extraterrestrial, great movie. It's a great movie from my childhood, and it's a great movie now. Always, which is kind of bland. I don't know. I don't love it. Uh, Jurassic Park, which is awesome. And The Lost World Jurassic Park, which is a very disappointing, it's not bad, but it's very disappointing sequel. I love Steven Spielberg, even if he just doesn't make great movies nowadays. Okay, so the first on the alphabetical Blu-rays list is 12 Years a Slave. One of my favorite films of the 2010s. Q Hotel Edgy 4, Paul Dano and Michael Fassbender are all phenomenal in this. Yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch is in it too, Paul Giamatti, Lupita Nyong'o, they all give amazing performances. Oh, I forgot Cumberbatch was in this movie. That's weird. Let's see if I can fit this in here. Uh, this is here in this section because although it's called the DreamWorks 3 Film Collection, these are all from Ardman Animation. So I called the Ardman 3 Film Collection Chicken Run, Waltz and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, and Flushed Away. Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Were-Rabbit is a primary reason I have this, because that is a great movie. There's a surprising amount of addiction jokes in that movie. Def probably deserved its win for Best Animated Feature. I like the other two quite a bit as well. They're really funny. Chicken Run is hilarious, but it's not all that great. Okay, one of the few 4K Blu-rays I have of Alien, the 40th anniversary edition. One of my favorite horror films. Probably my... Actually, it's not the best horror film ever made, but it's probably my favorite. Uh, so good. Chess birds are seen. Absolutely iconic. Uh, Alienza, which is equal to the first one. Also one of my favorite movies, but it's one of my favorite action movies. I, uh, the set, this, by the way, for anyone curious, I like the theatrical cut of Alien more than its director's cut, but the special edition of Aliens is better than its theatrical cut, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Anomalisa, Charlie Kaufman. Oh, man, what a depressing movie. But it's a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite films of the 2010s. One of my favorite animated films, too. Uh, Aquaman, huge guilty pleasure. Uh, not a great movie. One of the better DCEU films, in my opinion, which I haven't reviewed. I'm sorry. But I just don't really feel like talking about the DCEU films, because aside from this, Wonder Woman, and Shazam, they suck. Well, Birds of Prey was just eh. The other ones are just bad. Like, I did not like Man of Steel or Batman v Superman. Suicide Squad and Justice League are horrendous. Uh, Wonder Woman is decent. This is decent too, but I... It's more guilty pleasure than it is a decent movie. It's way too long. It, but the third act is amazing, and I, I hate Amber Heard, both as an actress and as a person. I'm talking about this movie for too long. Just guilty pleasure. Decent movie. Argo. Uh... Great Best Picture winner, but it's not my personal choice for Best Picture. I would have picked either Django Unchained or Amour. Uh, preferably Amour, but what can you do? A great Ben Affleck movie. Aside from Gone Girl, this is probably his career best performance. I really liked it. Finally, a Denis Villeneuve film. Arrival by Denis Villeneuve. Uh, all of his films uh, are phenomenal. That I've seen. I have not seen Polytechnic. But all of his films are phenomenal. Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, Forrest Whitaker, they're all amazing in this movie. The Artist. Uh, I would say it deserved to win Best Picture, if you want my opinion. It's one of my favorite films of 2011. It's not my number one favorite, but it's pretty close. Definitely in the top two or three of 2011. I'd say it deserved its win. Great movie. Great French silent movie. Avengers Infinity War. This is one of the reasons I don't have the Phase 3 Part 2 yet, because this is my favorite MCU film, and I already own it on Blu-ray, so I don't really need the fourth set, fourth one. A Beautiful Mind. Uh, this did not deserve Best Picture, in my opinion. I only have it because of that, but it is, it is a good movie. Um, I would have given it to Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, or Gosford Park, even. 
I don't own Gosford Park, but I like that movie a lot more than this. A uh, pretty good Ron Howard film. Russell Crowe, Russell Crowe, bleh, gives one of his best performances. Probably his top two. Either this or Gladiator are his best performances. He was phenomenal in those. The Best Picture Collection. I primarily have this for No Country for Old Men, which is one of my favorite Coen Brothers movies. But Hurt Locker, which it came with as well, is awesome. I do love Hurt Locker, and as well as Crash, which fucking sucks. The only reason I even own Crash is because it's in this collection. Like, I don't want to own a bad movie if unless it's in a collection. That's what I want to say. So you're not going to see a whole lot of bad movies on here because, like I said, the worst movies on here are the ones in the collections. But Crash is not very good at all. The Hurt Locker is amazing, even though I personally would have given the Oscar went to either A Serious Man or Inglorious Bastards, but whatever. No Country for Old Men hands down deserved to win. Even though I also love the, another film and news competition, which I'll get to eventually. No Country for Old Men is one of the best Coen Brothers films. They deserve their Oscars for that. Speaking of Coen Brothers, Big Lebowski. Uh, another one of the best uh, Coen Brothers films. Probably top two, I'd say. I love it. Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Alejandro González Iñárritu, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I adore this movie. Uh, one of my favorites of the decade. Probably top two, actually. Uh, there's one more film on here that I'll get to that's in that top two. But Birdman is such a phenomenal film. Highly recommend it. One of my favorite movies ever. <laughs> Speaking of Best Picture nominees, Black Panther. I am still puzzled as to why this got a Best Picture nomination. It didn't get a director, screenplay, or editing nomination, or multiple acting nominations at all. Didn't get any acting nominations. So I'm confused as to why this got nominated for Best Picture, because usually in order to get a Best Picture nomination, this isn't the rule, but usually you have to either get a director, one of the two screenplays, multiple acting nominations, or uh, film editing, in the case of Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, even the worst films that were nominated for Best Picture, Bohemian Rhapsody, Vice, and Green Book, uh, those films are much worse than this, but they met that criteria, so why was this nominated for Best Picture? Oh well, whatever, I still like this movie. like it a lot. Uh, one of the better uh, MCU villains. Speaking of Black, Black Klansman, Spike Lee's second best film. This should have won Best Picture, if not Roma or The Favorite, if you want my opinion. Amazing Spike Lee joint. Uh, Blade Runner 2049. This is the film, either this or Birdman, is my favorite film of the 2010s. Easily the best Denis Villeneuve film. Much better than the first, and I love the first, so that's saying something. Uh, Blood Simple, great Coen Brothers movie. I think it's, yeah, it's their first. It's just a great movie. There's not much I can say about it. I have only seen it once, though. So that's the end of part one. Part two will come soon.